So Ethan, um, you know, very often when you speak, you uh, you talk about how so much of the present cannabis market is 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 chemovars that are heavily myrcene based. That that you travel around the country and it's like myrcene everywhere, and um, and I always want to ask the next question. Well, Doctor Russo, if if there's too much myrcene in all of the commercially available cannabis. Um, what would you like there to be? So, so let's just say that we could, you know, uh, pie in the sky. If you could wave your hands and and have the existence of particular chemovars that were heavy in particular terpenes or terpene profiles, what would you like to see? If you could just snap your fingers. Sure. Well, there'd be a few. One would be alpha pinene. Uh, alpha pinene is hard to find in most modern cannabis chemovars. And it is going to be the key ingredient in limiting the short-term memory impairment uh, that THC produces. How it does this is as an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor. Acetylcholine is the memory molecule in the brain. Um, and by preventing its breakdown, there's more of it and people can think more clearly. And so uh, for the patient who has to work or study, while trying to treat their pain or other symptoms, having a good bit of alpha pinene uh, in the mix is going to be really helpful. As a sidebar, if somebody, if a patient is, does need to work and they also need to uh, be using cannabis for relief, would it help them to be to be using their THC but also have alpha pinene in an aromatherapy dis, uh, diffuser in the room? Did, would they work together like that? Well, uh, sure, if it were from a natural source. Mm -hmm. uh, so if they were using some kind of uh, pine-based uh, essential oil, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that could help. Right on. Uh, but ideally, uh, it yeah. would be better to have a cannabis-based medicine that had alpha pinene in it, uh, hopefully replacing some of the myrcene uh, I should mention, myrcene isn't all bad. Uh, I do call it the couch lock factor in cannabis when combined with THC because of its, uh, its mark sedative effect, a sort of narcotic effect. But it is uh, analgesic, painkiller in its own right, uh, and certainly would help with sleep. Uh, another component that would be really helpful to have is limonene. Limonene is a very powerful antidepressant and immune stimulant. Um, and so this brightens up uh, the effects of THC and uh, produces a vibrancy to the experience that clearly are a bigger advantage for someone with a mood disorder. Um, another one would be linalool. Linalool is the main component of lavender essential oil, which is well known as an anti-anxiety agent. It can have some sedative effects, but it's not a knock you out kind of experience like mercy can be. Um, so th this is a good one, particularly uh, for patients with seizure disorders because it has an anticonvulsant effect as well. Uh, fourth one that would be really good to have more of is caryophylline. Caryophylline is a really interesting agent. It is a terpenoid, but at the same time, it's a cannabinoid because it works on the CB2 receptor. THC also works on the CB2 receptor, but actually, um, caryophylline is more effective uh, on this receptor. So it provides anti-inflammatory benefits and pain relief without psychoactivity. Uh, so clearly, this is a good thing to have. Uh, an additional factor with caryophylline is it has an anti-addictive effect. Mm. Um, so this would be extremely helpful for the patient who might uh, have chronic pain and be taking opioids at the same time as their cannabis-based medicine. So let's just take these four. So um, having more of these individual terpenes in terpene profiles in, in chemovars is a great thing. Uh, what if we took it to an extreme and said that we had a chemovar that had you know, a couple percentage of each of those in it, do they work as well together? Or, um, you know, you've taught before that, that sometimes these, these terpenes and cannabinoids, if they're by themselves, they'll act as an agonist, but if they're with other things, they'll act as an antagonist because they, 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 they mix and match differently. Is it generally better to have more terpenes 
and more variety in most cases? Or really, do you, do you really kind of want to breed your cannabis for particular notes and try to stick with those? Uh, well, having a variety of terpenoids is going to create a more uh, interesting experience and, and probably provide more general symptom relief. Um, however, uh, again, uh, if I know the person's condition, what we're trying to treat, uh, gives me an idea of what terpenoids we might have them look for. Uh, and again, with the lack of diversity in the current market in most areas, this is going to be a hard thing to accomplish. But again, I'm thinking of this in an aspirational sense, mm -hmm. that we know that these things can be an advantage. and. We want the market to head in the direction of providing uh, more varied uh, chemovars that can provide the kinds of profiles that are going to be better suited to treating these conditions. Right on. So if you want to hear more about this, I've got two great sources for you. In the first comment, uh, there'll be a link to Ethan's paper on this topic, Taming Terpenes, and then his follow-up paper as well. And then also we did about uh, 90 minutes on two different episodes, so like three hours on this topic on the Shaping Fire podcast. So check out links for both of those below. Thanks, Ethan.